The internet. It's a global community of people and computers, all linked together and sharing a common language. It's constantly changing, growing. It's the new frontier for communicating and sharing resources. What it will be in the future is what you make of it today, because the internet is all about learning. Over 4 million computers in more than 160 countries, 30 million people are already online, and every month, 1 million more log on. All exploring, contributing, affecting change, learning, and growing together. The internet is not just computers and wires, it's people. Writers, students, scientists, educators, business people, you and me, anyone who has information to share with the world or is looking to tap into a world of information. The Internet's incredible power is, of course, its multimedia capabilities. What started as just text has blossomed into unbelievable graphics, sounds, even moving video. And if you know how to use a mouse, you're ready to surf the net. The internet is structure without form. There are no boundaries, and it's hard to imagine the sheer scope of the network. And yet there is organization, user-friendly software that takes its enormity in stride. As a result, the internet has an uncanny way of exciting the curiosity of anyone who uses it. Just a casual stroll to access a single online site turns into a trip of fantastic proportions because there is so much to see and do along the way. But what drives all of this? Why does it exist? Well, it started back in 1957 when the U.S. government, fearful of the Russian sudden technology leap, having launched the first successful satellite, established the Advanced Research Projects Agency, or ARPA, to retake the world lead in science and technology. Part of ARPA's charter was to improve the practical uses of the computer, especially for defense purposes. By 1969, the year Neil Armstrong stepped on the moon, the Defense Department commissioned the ARPANET, the first computer network. Participants in that first network were major universities who were involved in scientific research for the government. That initial connection to education was to play an important role in the network's future. By 1973, England and Norway joined the ARPANET. Ten years later, in 1983, the first desktop computers came into being, and soon after that, K-12 schools began to sign on. By 1990, the number of computers on the network eclipsed 100,000, and having been integrated with so many non-military users, the ARPANET ceased to exist, and the network officially became known as the Internet. Just four years later, in 1994, over 24 million computers and 4 million people were online, and schools around the world realized the educational potential of the Internet. In fact, well over 1,000 had connected. The Internet takes a vivid and imaginative approach to education. It adds excitement and value to teaching and learning, but it's just the beginning. The Internet continues to evolve as more and more people get connected, and the key to understanding it is, well, using it. Let me show you. First and foremost, the Internet's global reach lets classes take virtual tours of places no school bus could ever hope to visit. For instance, the Louvre. The Internet version is filled with hundreds of images just waiting to be viewed by students and art enthusiasts alike. Viewable 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. The famous paintings link takes you to a comprehensive list of available artwork, from gothic to abstract works, spanning nearly a thousand years. Here's several pieces done by Pablo Picasso. The neatest thing about these images is that you can print them out, save them on your hard drive, or retrieve them directly to your computer for inclusion in your classroom presentations. But you can tour more than just art museums on the internet. How about this? The White House. This online tour allows you to see rooms the public isn't allowed to enter and leave a message called email to the president himself. Images of almost every room in the White House can be viewed here. There's an online welcome message from the president that's just a mouse click away. Welcome to the White House, our first online citizen's handbook. Even Socks the Cat is here to greet you. Put on those safari hats, everyone. 
With access to the internet, you and your students can even tour South Africa. This colorful site lets students go on a safe virtual safari without ever having to venture into the grasslands. There's information about South Africa's economy, culture, and more. Online field trips aside, there's lots of internet sites that cater to distinct subject areas. Science, for one. Any space shuttle fans out there? NASA has long maintained rich, colorful online sites filled with great information about the United States space program. You'll find pictures, sounds, even movie clips from the earliest Gemini missions to the most recent shuttle launches. For teachers, there's hundreds of lesson plans for all grade levels prepared by NASA staffers. It's part of the high school biology experience, dissecting a frog, yuck. Except now, students are doing it online. That's right, no more messy formaldehyde or scalpels. Just point and click to take this virtual frog skin off or remove its eyes or skeleton. Then click again to take the finished frog and rotate it any way you wish. Virtual pig dissection is expected to come online soon too. For the more earthy types out there, how about a virtual garden? This telerobotic installation allows you to view and interact with a garden in California filled with living plants. Students are planting seeds and watching them grow over the course of the school year, all via the internet and this unique site. Internet sites perfect for inclusion in social studies classes abound on the internet. First stop, FedWorld. It links you to more than 150 U.S. government departments and agencies that maintain online databases. The Justice Department, the Department of Agriculture, Congress, even the Department of Education all have information on the internet. FedWorld is the place to go to visit the mall. All aboard the USS Internet, stow away aboard a turn-of-the-century sailing boat where wind was the only propulsion a sailing vessel had. Sea stories, exotic ports of call, ship clip art for projects, and sailing songs abound. This single site is being used in dozens of schools to enliven classroom lessons and projects concerning both the history and the cultural aspects of sailing. Look out, the bard is alive and well, thank you, in cyberspace. Every word William Shakespeare put to paper can be found here. It's even annotated to an online Old English dictionary. Romeo and Juliet, The Tempest, Henry V, Julius Caesar, Othello, you name it, it's all right here. And take a look at this, it's searchable? Enter your keywords and bam, all references to them appear, linked to the original source material. Need help with that research paper or poem? Look no farther than the Purdue Online Writing Lab. Open at all hours, the lab's treasure trove of tips and tricks and links to writing tutorials at dozens of other prestigious colleges and universities have proven invaluable to students at all levels. There's even hands-on tips for searching the internet as part of your assignments. Very cool. Last but not least, here's a site that welcomes submissions of original writings for publication to the world. KidPub is a corner of the World Wide Web where children are encouraged to publish their stories and news about their schools and towns. Submitting stories is as easy as sending an email message. That's one of the most important aspects of the internet, the giving back of information to the larger online community. And students are one of the most active groups of online residents giving a little bit of themselves to the world by publishing their writings online. Speaking of younger students, check out these interactive sites. Here's an online coloring book where students can spend a few minutes coloring in any one of 10 basic online images. Here's a birthday cake and a flower. Talk about hands-on, how about light bright online? Just click some colored pegs into place and whammo, instant picture. Some can get pretty complicated. Others, well, are pretty simple. Either way, a click of the mouse sends a student's completed light bright creation to a master list of other submissions. That way, the whole world can see them. But there's more to the internet than just subject-specific destinations. Did you know that there's two million computers on the internet full of free documents, programs, and clip art? all waiting for you to retrieve for your use at school? 
Just a click of the mouse brings you into an online computer holding free files, known as an anonymous FTP site. A few more clicks will take you through the contents of the site until, aha, the free files appear. Double-clicking on the file you want brings it from the internet right onto your hard drive. Once it's been transferred or fetched, as you can see here, it's yours to use. Free software and graphics are wonderful, but how about online communications between entire classrooms of students? How about PayPals and collaborative projects? Email makes both of these exciting uses of the internet possible. What are KeyPals? Well, they're pen pals, except no stamps or messy envelopes are necessary. Text messages sent by email take less than 15 seconds to cross the world. It's not unusual for students to send and receive several messages to each other several times a day, even if they're thousands of miles apart. And collaborative projects? They involve connecting entire classes of students to complete assigned tasks. The possibilities are virtually endless. Educators at all levels are using the internet to enhance their professional teaching skills as well. Take lesson plans. Eric, the Educational Resources Information Center, is your key to thousands of them, all free on more than a dozen curriculum areas. There's mathematics, English, even social studies. Print them, save them, whatever. They're yours. There's even places to chat with your teaching peers. Teacher Talk is a vibrant bull to board in cyberspace, waiting for you to tack up your question or tip. Teachers from around the world surf here every day to interact. Then, of course, there's Classroom Connect on the net. Here, anyone can access the latest online educational information put online by the staff of the premier newsletter for K-12 staffers using the internet in the classroom. Best of all, Classroom Connect now offers Classroom Web, a place for any K-12 school to mount information on the internet's World Wide Web for free. More than 250 elementary and secondary schools have taken us up on the offer already. So can you. What lies ahead for the internet? Well, its inhabitants have always had an uncanny knack for coming up with new uses for the network. Today, the internet is home to dozens of new tools never before dreamed of, even as little as a year ago. How about live video conferencing over the internet, available for virtually no cost? Live video and audio sent in real time from classroom to classroom. It's happening right now on the internet, and the image and sound quality are only getting better and better. Best of all, soon anyone with a fast modem and a computer will be able to do this. No kidding. Live audio conferencing via the internet is now a reality as well. Using internet phone, students are dialing each other up and collaborating on projects, no matter where they live. And real audio software finally lets users listen to recorded programs live, no matter their length. It's these kinds of new technologies that continue to make the internet an indispensable part of the educational process in thousands of schools around the world. And I haven't even scratched the surface of all the fantastic places you can visit and interact with. This tape is the first in a series of four that will guide you through using email, gopher, file transferring, and of course, the World Wide Web. The internet is in everyone's future. The foundation it's laying for education and communication will forever change the way we learn. From your school at your desk, you can tap into global knowledge where anyone can participate and everyone is equal. And to compete in the developing global marketplace, all students will need to become lifelong learners. And the internet is the key to making this a reality. Try it, use it. Once you do, you'll never look back.